Let's all see that's how fun this activity is. G, Ms. Shanav, what activity do we have for us? Ms. Shanila, can you hear us? Ji, I can hear you, Ali. Okay. So, um, I, uh, can, can we have the activity? Let's, uh, all the people are back. So let's, yeah, let's, sure. yeah, let's, let's do something. Yeah. Um, I would request all of you, if you can uh, switch on your camera for the next few. So this activity will be more fun. It's seeing you all online. Awesome. Yes, very nice. Our next speaker is also here, Abdullah Anjam. Thank you, Dr. Sir, for joining in. We we are just uh, creating an environment for you. So, so allow us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, that, because people have been, uh, they, they are with us since morning, 10 o'clock. So, so we yeah, want yeah. energy, uh, morning energy back before it hand over to you. Yeah. So, uh, we are all, uh, shall I, the people who have on the cameras, I'm grateful to you all. Uh, but if you can, possible for you, it will be great fun having you um, on the camera. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Hatia. Um, please have the camera on for the next five minutes or so. So we'll have this activity in a moment. Um, I really don't know what is the activity. I just want, I'm just hoping it would be a great activity. That's great fun. G, uh, Ms. Shanila, what do you? supposed to do the activity okay for that i would request stand up if they can easily yeah. and um, uh, alisa if you can just pause the recording here oh okay sure sure recording resumed that allow me to introduce uh, our next speaker Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, we were on the last topic of uh, our today's session. Um, it was supposed to, we, we are running behind the schedule a bit, but uh, you know, that's somehow we are enjoying it as well. So, thank you for uh, being with us. Uh, um, we, this is the last topic of today's agenda economic benefits of improving air quality. Uh, for this, we have with us uh, Dr. Abdullah. Um, Dr. Abdullah is agriculture economy. Ali, it's back. Ali, it's Dr. Abdullah. Okay, thank you. Okay, Dr. Saab, I have muted you. Thank you. All right, sir, uh, Dr. Bedullah is the uh, agriculture economist, graduated from the University of uh, Philippines at Los Banos. His special areas of interest are environmental evaluation of production technologies and non-marketable goods, value chains, analysis of pre-urban agriculture. Currently, he is the chief of research at Pakistan Institute of Development Economics, PIDE, uh, where he is heading agriculture research group and leading environmental economics uh, components in the Department of Public Policy. During his professional career, he has published 42 research papers in highly reputed national and international journals, eight books, chapters, 32 papers in different conference proceedings, and 22 articles in different newspaper and magazine. Dr. Abedullah, thank you so much for joining us. Nail, I unmute you. Yes, yes, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much, Ali. So, can I share my screen now? Did you can you uh, you have the right and you can okay. speak. Okay. Awesome. Can you see this screen? Yes. Is it visible? Make it a full screen. So yeah. it is okay. really yes. Very nice. Okay. There you go. <laughs> okay guys good afternoon everyone so i hope that you will enjoy this and lecture because this is slightly different than others because economics uh, as you know that economics 
people are saying it's sort of boring subject, but I don't think I will try to make it interesting, I think. So the, uh, I'm Dr. Abedullah Anjum, I'm working as Chief of Research in Pakistan Institute of Development Economics. So I will talk about economic benefits of improving air quality. So the contents of my presentation are as follow. First, I will talk about the types, types of pollution and pollutants. I'm sure you have learned about this already, but just I will present a recap of that. I mean, not talk uh, much in depth. <clears throat> Sorry. Then sources of air pollution. And I am also, you have learned about that. So the optimal level of pollution, this is quite new for you because this involves economics. And then I will present some empirical evidence and also impact of air pollution. And then lastly, I will discuss about the damages of air pollution and economic benefits of clean environment. So when we are saying basically damages, so that is if we can avoid that damages and due to which is occurring due to air pollution, so that is the economic benefits uh, to stop that damages. So in fact, so uh, in economics, we're using damages and benefits as alternative term to each other. So as I said, first, the, these are the types of pollution and you have already learned about that, but today we will focus only on particular you know, air pollution. So that is, although air pollution has linkages with water pollution and land, land pollution as well, but we will not uh, uh, uncover those linkages because that required detail and critical and sensitive uh, techniques and knowledges. <clears throat> so, I mean, um, pollutants are harmful solid liquids or gases produced in higher than usual concentration and reduce the quality of our environment. So basically when we're talking this pollution, I mean, this affects all walks of life. So it affects our, our routine matters. It also affects health and it also affects agriculture sector and other, uh, other productive, product, productive activities as well. So, I mean, that has negative impact on, on different way on our life. So among the pollutants, as I think Dr. Fahim has already discussed about that, that carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and nitrogen oxide, and carbon monoxide, and particulate matters. And here I added methane, uh, which is one of the dangerous gas, basically. And the one kg of methane, in fact, is equal to 84 kg of carbon dioxide. So that's why although agriculture, we are saying contributing little, especially livestock in the air pollution, but uh, because the conversion, high conversion rate from methane to carbon dioxide, it accounts a significant share in the total emission. So basically we're saying there are uh, two type of uh, pollution. One is uh, non-anthropogenic and one is anthropogenic. Non-anthropogenic sources include volcano eruption, dust storms, and forest fires that depletes the air quality. And I mean, we can't do anything with that because that is uh, from the nature and we can't control the nature, of course. So the other source of the pollution is the, is the anthropogenic that is uh, coming from the uh, different kind of human activities. So for example, combustion of fossil fuels like coal and oil use or electricity and road transport is producing air pollutants like nitrogen and sulfur dioxide. And similarly, the emission from industries and factories releasing large amount of carbon monoxide, hydrocarbons, chemicals, and organic compounds into the air. And agriculture activities also using a lot of pesticide and insecticide and fertilizer that also emit harmful chemicals in the air. And finally, the livestock, especially uh, the animal dungs and also uh, emitting and the methane gas uh, in, the, in the air. So now when we are talking that these are the different kind of emissions that are taking place um, through human activity. So if we really want to control uh, that those emissions, I mean, 
then one way or another way, we have to contribute. Uh, I mean, uh, basically, and we, if we want to stop them or control them, then there are different techniques. But finally, it depends that how society is willing to pay for those for those things. Because in order to control them, if, for example, one possible approach is that we can stop the production from wherever the emission is taking place, then it will affect the consumption pattern. So we have to stop the consumption, which is not possible because there are so many important things that we are consuming every day. Uh, although those commodities uh, when are produced are emitting different kinds of emissions. So uh, if, I mean, that stopping the consumption is not possible, then we are saying the second possible approach is that we can uh, install different instruments to control the emission at the, at the point of emission. So by doing that, we can minimize or uh, at least control some emission but definitely it will increase the cost of production. So that will appear in terms of high prices. So finally, it is a burden on the consumer in terms of high prices. So we are saying that is sort of trade off between uh, prices and the air pollution. So as the society as long as is willing to pay high prices, they can enjoy lower level of pollution. So uh, if, I mean, society is not willing to pay uh, for the clean environment, definitely, and then it is difficult to control it. So third possibility is to switch over uh, from pollution production process to cleaner production process. For example, in electricity, we can move from um, producing electricity from fossil fuels to cleaner source of energy like wind and solar but those are expensive, I mean, and techniques to produce electricity. So similarly in other, in other sectors of the economy. So if we want to move towards the cleaner sources, again, depend that how much society is really willing to pay for that. So here, these are major source of, sources of non-dust PM components. So basically, if we see that uh, here, uh, areas of black dots are propor propor proportional to fraction of each compound uh, originating from uh, individual sources. That is the dots in each column sum to the same total area. So, I mean, if we just, I mean, see add up the total proportion uh, along, uh, in the column and then estimate, then we see that in sulfur dioxide, the power generation and manufacture and this is contributing highest. So similarly, in terms of ammonia, uh, agriculture is contributing highest. And similarly, in case of black carbon and there are manufacturing industry and transportation and homes and, and as well as wildfires and so on. And same stories in case of organic. So, so then we have basically indoor air pollution. So, uh, which has a serious public health concern in developing countries, especially. So Pakistan faces 28,000 deaths every year. The annual, basically we're saying, uh, the uh, cost of indoor air pollution is about 1% of the GDP in Pakistan. So <clears throat> here you can say, see the, the, the impact of air pollution on visibility. So when that kind of situation affects, now you can see that it affects all walks of life. So the person who want to travel from A to B, definitely uh, the, the time will increase to move from point A to B. And some people has to reschedule its, its, their trips. And also it will affect the productions. Children can't go to school. And all this has uh, economic cost. Uh, on the society. So, I mean, this is, I mean, in the whole situation. So in 2016, fine particulate matter was reported four times higher than the World Health Organization recommended level uh, exceeding 104 microgram per cubic meter in the worst hit parts of the city of around 10 millions. And uh, visibility plunged into less than 
20 meters and his citizen wore face masks to help with breathing. So at least 13 people were killed and nearly 100 wounded to pileups involving 16 vehicles on the Lahore Islamabad motorway due to dense smoke on 4 November 2016. So this kind of, I mean, if we compile up, I mean, different types of losses that society faces during this kind of event, I mean, it becomes in, in millions and billions. So in the, in, the, in the next few slides, you will see that uh, when we will jump to the uh, cost, uh, economic cost of pollution, you will see that it becomes how big numbers are coming from coming there. So <clears throat> this is basically air pollution from agriculture. So there are basically four sources. And one is uh, crop residue burning, and, and th this is one of the biggest source. And second, basically from um, well fire, and then basically, and and the next one is basically from the humans, uh, from the cat, from the <clears throat> animals. On uh, CH4, as uh, you can see, the when animals are taking breath, and then also from animal dung, CH4 is emitting. And the fourth one is basically the pesticide use. So as I said, that. Uh, the methane is really very um, and dangerous gas. And now if we want to control it, then the only way is that we can, we have to reduce uh, the meat consumption. That's why we are saying that, uh, uh, that, that there is a trade off now, that how luxury food you want to enjoy or how luxury environment you want to enjoy. <clears throat> so now this air pollution has, I mean, uh, impacts on, on all walks of life. So as I mentioned earlier, you can see it has affected, it destroyed the infrastructure because of climate change. And it also has effect on the agriculture productivity. And it also has effect on the, on the mobility from one point to another point and also has damages uh, on the infrastructure. So it means when we are talking about the value uh, of the of the pollution, so it means we have to uh, account all these factors. That how much I mean infrastructure destroyed due to increase in pollution, how much damages in agriculture sectors is taking place, and how much uh, it contributes in terms of uh, in uh, hard, hard, hitting the uh, mobility from one point to another point. So here is the basically now, I don't know. I mean, do you have any con some concept about the consumer surplus or producer surplus guys? Can you, anybody comment on that? Or I would like to have your input on that. Do you have any concept about the consumer surplus or the producer surplus? Anybody? Okay. If not, then, uh, okay, one more question that I want to put here. Do you have a concept of demand and supply curve? No one? Okay, we are saying basically, and uh, this downward sloping EB is a demand curve, which is downward, I mean, sloping. Now this implies basically, so we are saying uh, when that is marginal, I mean, demand curve or willingness to pay function, we also call it. So we are saying that for first unit of the commodity, we are willing to pay very high amount. And for the second unit, we are willing to pay less compared to the first unit. And for third unit, even we are willing to pay less than the second unit. Why it happens? Anybody? Can you listen to me clearly? Gigi, sir, we can listen to you. 
So, because no response is coming, I'm worried that might be. Uh, so, it's very simple question. For example, if you're very hungry and I ask you that uh, how much you are willing to pay uh, for one piece of apples, you, you, you may say a response or that, okay, uh, 20 rupees. Because you're Sir, I hungry. guess uh, it's, it is due to, uh, you know, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, like if we have to, you are giving the example, I will continue to, that example. If I am hungry and I want to eat anything, I'll pay whatever you ask me for that. But if it is for the second, third unit, then I would not be needing that. So I would not be going for that amount. I think this is the answer of that. Yeah, that's good. Very good. I mean, that is sort of we, we interpret in terms of utility, satisfaction. We are saying first unit of any commodity give us very high level of satisfaction. That's why we are, we are willing to pay high amount. And the next unit will pay, I mean, comparatively less satisfaction or less utility than the first unit. That's why you, we, we are willing to pay less for the second and so on for the third. You know, after reaching up to certain point, you will say, no, I don't want to consume anymore. Even you will give me free. Why? The commodity is the same because it will not give you any more satisfaction or rather it will give you disutility. So you stop it to consume it. So this is the reason that why you are willing to pay, I mean, less and less for every next unit. So that's, we call it margin willingness to pay function. The same story is, I mean, we are saying marginal cost function. So when we produce one unit, first unit, I mean, the cost of production is high. Uh, and then uh, small. When we are moving to the next unit, the cost of, cost of production increases. As we are add, adding more and more units, the cost of production is increasing more and more. So that's why we are saying marginal cost function. So now we are saying where marginal willingness to pay, cut the marginal, uh, I mean, cost function, and that is, we are saying that is the optimum level of commodity that will be produced in the society. So that is Q1. Now we say that, and uh, that if we, I mean, uh, now look along the supply curve, that for the first unit and the cost of production is small, and the next for the second unit, the cost of production is slightly higher, and so on. So, but when we are saying the market equilibrium has established at point Q1, the prices is P1. It means and the producer is selling all his output at the ongoing market price, which is P1. But all you, the cost of production for all unit is not P1. For the, I mean, the originally, the, I mean, units he produced at, at a much lower cost. So that is why we are seeing the area OP1B is the producer surplus. So because if he sold each unit of output at the, at the price um, equal to the cost of production, then, I mean, then the, he would not have achieved this area, the, which, which we call the producer surplus. So is that, is that clear so far? Yes, sir, it's clear. So same in case of now consumer surplus. So because the first unit we are willing to buy at very high price and at second unit comparatively at the less price, but when market has established at equilibrium, so we are buying all unit of uh, output at the price P1. So it means we have saved some area. So that is equal to P1B E, which is consumer surplus. So, in this way, we are seeing this consumer surplus and producer surplus has established. So now, I mean, look at this. This here, I have done, the, this is MPC is the margin physical cost or margin, product, margin, margin production cost. It is same in the basically previous line, which we call, we, which we call the margin cost function. So now we just renamed it marginal private cost or margin physical cost of production. So, and then we are saying this is demand function, which we originally also 
uh, in the previous slide, we said that this is willingness to pay function. So now we are just renaming it and saying that the demand curve or along this curve, we can estimate margin physical uh, benefit or margin private benefit, which is equal to margin social benefit. I will differentiate and explain that what is the margin social benefit or margin private benefit. Similarly, what is margin private cost or margin social cost? Basically, when there is no uh, pollution taking place, so then uh, there will be only margin private cost, which producer is facing. But we are saying when there is externality is taking place during the production process, then emission is taking place. It means society is facing different costs than the producer is facing. So because producer is not internalizing the cost of uh, emission that society is facing. So that is why the margin private costs and margin social costs uh, differed from each other. So because society is, uh, uh, I mean, assuming the cost is much higher than the private sector is facing. So that is why, as we have learned earlier, earlier their margin private cost will cut the demand curve that will be the optimum level. So in case of there is no pollution, so the private sector uh, or the producer will decide to produce at Q1 because margin private cost is equal to margin benefit. So, but society uh, want uh, the producer to produce at Q star level, which is less than uh, Q1. So, and at Q star, you can see the price, equilibrium price will be higher than the price at Q1. So because society is willing to pay uh, the prices uh, of that pollution. But problem, the question is that how to uh, make the producer, I mean, uh, force them that he should must produce at Q star. And then we are saying in economics, we are saying that there, there are different techniques and we, we impose different kinds of taxes and equal to the damages of pollution. And so that the, and the producer can include that, I mean, tax or in the, in the profit occasion. Because normally we are saying profit is equal to revenue minus cost. So if we will force him to include the cost of emission, then there will be another cost. We will say a profit will be equal to revenue minus cost of production minus cost of emission or cost of damages due to that emission. So third component will come in. So that is why the margin social cost will now will shift from MPC to MSC margin social cost because now revenue minus total cost. Total cost will be equal to private cost plus cost of emission uh, or damages due to emission. So there are two components. That's why uh, we are saying the, the social cost will shift upward. So, and the optimum level will shift from Q1 to Q2, Q2 start. So that is, I mean, how we, can, how we include the emission or the damages due to emission in the, in the process of production. So that will allow the producer to shift from Q1 to Q2 star. And now when we are saying the optimum level of pollution. So now in this curve along the x-axis, we have taken the total emission, which, which is, I mean, taking place during the production process. And along the y-axis, we have uh, taken the damages or cost of that damages and which is taking place because of that emission. Now, as we move from origin towards right, and the margin damage, damage function is increasing. Why? Because production is increasing. When production will increase, the emission will increase. So as we move from uh, origin to right, and uh, the MDF, which is called the margin damage function, and it is moving upward. So now, if we want to really, I mean, clean or abate that pollution that is, or emission which is taking place, let us say uh, we are at point EU. So at EU and the emission level EU, 
the damage that will take place if we just draw the line from EU to MDF, that will be the, and the damages and that EU emission is, I mean, occurring due to EU emission. So now, if I mean, want to clean that uh, emission, so then uh, for each unit, we have to pay cost or we have to uh, I mean, install technology. So uh, that is what we call margin abatement cost. So or now if we want to move from EU towards E1, so each unit that we want to abate is adding more and more cost because on vertical axis, if we draw I mean, from, from vertical axis to the, and the different lines to margin abatement cost. So as we are abating more and more, and uh, the cost will be more and more. So at the point where margin damage function and uh, cut the margin abatement cost, that will be, we are saying, that will be optimal uh, emission. So because beyond that point, now the emission from point uh, origin to E1, emission is taking place, but we are saying that is not economically viable to abate it. Why? Because as we move from point left from point E1, and you can see that the margin abatement cost is higher than the margin damage function. I mean, that unit, I mean, if we move from e left from E1, the, we are saying the damage function is less, what it damages, but to, in order to abate it, the cost will be higher. So then we are saying it's not economically viable. So in the next slide here, you can see, I mean, I have um, presented both cases. So as if we are at point E2, now you can see at point E2, the uh, margin abatement cost is E2C. If we want to, I mean, abate from move from EU to E2, the cost will, that, that will take place will be equal to E to C. But damages which is occurring due to E2 emission is equal to E to B. So it means damages are higher than the, uh, than the cost of abatement. So it is economically viable to abate uh, E2 emission. So we will continue to abate as long as margin damage function becomes equal to margin abatement cost. So please, I would like to have your response at this point in time. So is it um, make sense or is it understandable? Or you would like to raise any question? Sir, this is understandable. Kaina um, Javed here. But I want to ask one thing over here that uh, why do we talk about willingness to pay? Why don't we talk about extended producer responsibility? Like yes. if we really want to abate then. Yes. So that again, we are saying basically that who will pay is, I mean, polluter will pay, producer will pay or the, or the consumer will pay. That depends on the property, right? The property right is one of the important issue in environmental and uh, degradation problems. So if, for example, we are saying and uh, the property right holds by the, uh, by the consumer, the consumer has the property right of the environment, then again, I mean, bargain will take place between consumer and producer. So uh, now if the property right holds by the, by the consumer, then producer will approach to the consumer that I let me allow uh, to allow, allow to produce and how much you are willing to ac accept for this pollution. So, I mean, that, I mean, uh, the producer will offer some compensation to the consumer. So in this way, again, the optimum level will establish at point E1, where margin damage function or the offer function will be equal to the margin acceptance function. And now the other way around, if the I mean, property right hold by the producer, then consumer will approach the producer that they stop the, uh, the pollution or emission. So they will continue to compensate to the producer as long as damages becomes equal to the benefits. 
So damages and benefit becomes equal to E1A. So we are saying that is the optimum level of pollution. And beyond that, moving towards left, it's not economically viable to uh, abate the pollution. All the pollution exists. The, the same basically uh, in this graph uh, here, I just, I mean, opposite, I have portrayed that if we are at point E3, then we are saying, look at the point E3. The margin abatement cost is much higher than the margin damage function. So marginal damage that is taking place due to E3 emission is only E3 capital and E. This is the only damage. But in order to abate that, that unit and the cost that will take place will be equal to E3D. So E3D is much higher than E3 small e. So that is why we are saying it is not economically viable to abate or to clean and that level of emission. Sir, I want to ask a question. Yeah, sure. Uh, sir, in uh, during my master's, I learned about Kuznet curve, and my professor talked a lot about that. And he said to, said to us that um, sustainability is a very idealized model, mm -hmm. but the reality is Kuznet curve. Mm -hmm. So, sir, what do you think? We uh, you are saying that uh, the E3 um, point, then we have a very uh, high cost of abatement. Yeah. Right. So, but in reality, if uh, we compare our situation in Pakistan and we compare the situation with uh, developed countries, they also followed the same Kuznet curve and uh, his principles. So, what do you think? Uh, which uh, which model we should follow? Basically, the uh, environmentalists are, I mean, wishing to pollute at zero level emission. Yes, sir. But we are saying zero level emission in economic uh, terminology, we are saying not possible. Because the last unit of emission and the cost to abate um, uh, um, is very, very high. Then it damages and nobody is willing to pay that much high, high cost. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, there is a one cost theorem which explained that and saying that no matter who holds the property right, either consumer or producer, the optimum level will remain the same. So yes. it does not matter that, I mean, who holds the property, right? We are saying economically optimum level will stay at E1A at the same level. So the Kuznet curve that we are talking, I mean, definitely, I mean, in Kuznet curve, uh, I mean, it relates the, uh, I mean, give the relationship between income and the environmental pollution. So we're yes. saying as, as, as income level increases, people are willing to pay high and then there will be less pollution. So, um, I mean, it depends again, as I mentioned earlier, that it is sort of trade off between, between prices and, and the level of air quality. So if you really want to enjoy high level of air quality, then you have to pay, I mean, high prices. So because finally, and that and the cost has to appear in the in the cost of production. So that is why I mean in underdeveloped country, because our income level is small, we are willing to pay only only small amount of because our first objective is to fill the belly and not to take care of the environment. And that's why we are much more worried to feed our people or to to alleviate poverty rather than taking care of environment. So as long as income increases, then people become cautious or worry about the environment. Even you know that in Pakistan, and those people who are who are income level is high, they are looking at the area which are comparatively cleaner. So they are uh, want to stay or want to live in those areas and uh, which are comparatively uh, clean. And even at the high price, they are willing to pay high prices for the property. So that is, I mean, clearly indicates that the, I mean, there is a trade-off between prices and the and the and the level of emission or the level of the quality of, of the air. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yes, so 
Yes, thank you. So, uh, can I just um, add on to the discussion? Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I, I will request, please, uh, keep your question till the end of the uh, lecture, please. We are already late of the schedule, so we can discuss later on. If somebody wants to leave earlier, then he can leave. At least the lecture will be completed at that time. But if you want to discuss, Dr. Sir will be available, definitely. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, then now, I mean, there are empirical evidence I'm mean, presenting here. In, in one, I mean, Hong et al. 2021 estimated the benefit cost ratio of one ton emission reduction of PM10 and, and PM2.5 in China, which is 0 0.61 and 0 0.66 respectively, which this clearly demonstrate that if we are spending $1 in order to uh, abate one ton of uh, emission, it generates benefit only 0 0.61 and 0 0.66, respectively for PM10 and for, for PM2.5. And so this demonstrates that in that particular area, it's not economically viable uh, and, to, and to reduce the emission because the benefits are based on the willingness to pay because in that particular area might be people that are not willing to pay much uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, that it might be depend on the on the level of income, because the might be the level of income is not that high that people are willing to pay a high amount for the pollution reduction. So here, I mean, another uh, now we are moving towards that uh, um, different impacts. So this study, basically, according to Peng et al. 2021. If the concentration of particulate matter with a diameter of 2.5 micrometer or less increases by 1%, then the scales of annual R&D, personal and expenditures, and new patents will decline by uh, 0 0.359 and, and one, 0 0.169 and 0 0.293 respectively. So this finding clearly demonstrates basically that air, air pollution is uh, basically considerable threat to innovation and technology progress in China. So, I mean, then if we want to, I mean, improve innovation, and then, I mean, we have to increase and the investment in, 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 I mean, or clean the environment. So then here, welfare costs of mortality and illness. So worldwide indoor and outdoor pollution jointly Led to 5.5 million uh, premature deaths in 2013. The cost at global level are projected to be close to US dollar 3.2 trillion in 2015 and expected to increase uh, to US dollar 18 to 25 trillion by 2060. So it is mainly due to increase in premature deaths in China and India. And also the second factor is that the income uh, will increase, which will, uh, which will lead, lead to high value associated with each premature death. Because with the passage of time, the income level are increases and prices are increasing. So which will lead to high level of uh, foregone, uh, I mean, um, the benefits. Then we are saying economic benefits of air pollution reduction in agriculture, ammonia emission, in agriculture strongly contributing to fine particulate air pollution PM2, which has a significant impact on human health contributing to mortality. So Despina et al. 2018 concluded that 50% uh, basically a reduction in agriculture emission could prevent more than 2000 deaths per year in 59 countries which could generate economic benefits of many billions US dollars. So within EU countries only, 140,000 deaths could be prevented per year with an associated economic benefits of about 407 billion US dollars per year. So now we can see, I mean, in different countries, different kind of, I mean, threats are there or, or the benefits of improving air quality is there but it demands a joint effort because individual country really can't do anything and might be because that's the problem because air pollution, it has no boundary. It moves from one country to another country. 
So no, every country, especially the poor country, uh, I mean, feels no benefits uh, because they feel that even if, if we put efforts and, and pollution will uh, travel from other countries. So it required a joint venture or joint effort in, in order to uh, take initiative to reduce the pollution. So here it is a, I mean, particular case that we have studied in agriculture. This is my own paper. And, and you know that the, uh, in, in cotton production, the pesticide use is highest compared to all other crops. So almost in cotton, farmers are spraying uh, between 15 to 20 spray uh, in, on one crop, so which is quite high. So BT technology is, uh, is a way to reduce the pesticide use because BT technology has the resistance against, against bullworm which is one of the highest threat to cotton production. So we have estimated the mean environmental efficiency of beauty farms, which is 37% uh, higher. And now we are saying that if we want to uh, achieve the same level of um, pesticide use with non beauty cotton, then and the yield of course decline. And so in order to forego earning due to yield decline, will be $54 per acreage. So uh, if we, there is no beauty. So if we want to achieve the same level of pesticide use, which we have, which beauty has achieved. So, and the, 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 there will be loss of $54 per acreage. So in 2012, and there was 6.9 million acreage were grown with beauty technology. So it mean if we just simply multiply and US dollar 54 with 6.9. So in aggregate term, there is a benefits of BT technology of $370 million just in one year. So, I mean, that is that kind of technology as I mentioned earlier, and that we can adopt different kinds of technology in order to minimize the environmental damages. I mean, here we can see that is one example and we can see that that is sort of win-win situation on one side, Farmers are getting higher high profit as well, and on the other side, we are also the, achieving the objective of clean environment. So here, nobody has to pay; rather, that is win-win situation. So similarly, we're saying Chiang et al. 2013 find that and marginal willingness to pay uh, contribute four percent in improvement in mean SO2 concentration is about I mean uh, is dollar. 2,333 or 1.4% of the mean housing price. So as I said, we discussed that people want to live in the clean environment and people want to pay for the clean environment. And moreover, when we are purchasing any commodity, so we are not paying the price for commodity. In fact, we are paying the price for the characteristic attached with that commodity. For example, if there are two types of uh, uh, apples and one is price 120 kg and other is price, uh, I mean, 100 kg, 100 rupees per kg, and you are buying uh, the, uh, the apple of 120 rupees per kg, why? Uh, might be the, it, it has better shining and it looks fresh. So these are the characteristics for which you are paying 20 rupees extra per kg, although both are apple. So there is no difference in apples. So only difference is of characteristic. The same story in every commodity. If you are going to buy a house, the, for example, the similar type of house, you are paying much, much high price in F6, F7, but the same price and similar type of house in, in, in other areas, you are not willing to pay that much high price because the characteristic attached with that property in F6 or F7 are much better and then compared to the, and the same house in other areas. So now similarly, Ministry of Climate Change in Pakistan speculated a loss of 1 billion rupees per day for economic circle of Lahore city due to disruption caused by smoke in year 2016-17. So as I discussed earlier that when there is smoke, then all walks of life get disturbed and if we, I mean, estimate the cost of that uh, 
uh, event, I mean, then it is around 1 billion per day, which is quite high. Now here, if we look the the contribution of basically PM 2.5 um, by different countries, and this is top 10 countries. So Bangladesh is, I mean, highest contributing and 77.1 microgram per cubic meter uh, uh, of PM 2.5, and Pakistan the second highest, uh, I mean, 59 micrograms per cubic meter, uh, and, and so on. So here you can see that these countries are basically, I mean, top 10 countries and contributing uh, particulate matter in the air. So Pakistan comes at the second number. So we really need to get ready that if we want to save our people, then we have to take proper measures in order to reduce it. So now this is, this slide indicates that particulate pollution, particulate matter pollution is contributed highest in, in, in terms of damages. So, and the, the damages from particulate pollution in terms of human health is 1.8 billion years. Uh, uh, I mean, from the particulate matter, which is highest compared to all other type of pollution. If we compare it with the smoke, smoking and alcohol and drug, and uh, smoking is the second highest which is contributing 1.6 uh, billion uh, days uh, per year, billion days of year uh, are, are losing, we are saying in terms of. So, so if, I mean, look at this, so this just, I mean, just I want to conclude at this slide that particulate matter is the most dangerous type of pollution uh, because it is affecting most uh, to the human health. So, this, if we look at this, then, then the toxic air, water, soil, and chemical pollution is altogether basically killing almost 8.3 million people annually in the world. Uh, so among those, if we look the distribution at the country level, then we can see that India is the highest or uh, barely hit, uh, where the deaths is 2.33 million um, per annum and China is the second highest, 1.87 million. And Pakistan falls at the number fifth. So, I mean, the, the death in Pakistan due to air pollution is 0 0.22 million, which is quite high. So, but now the rich country like China, although the damages are high, but they're also taking a measures in order to control it. So look at this, I mean, uh, here you can see that, I mean, total, if we look the, uh, before that, I will discuss the next slide. I'm coming back to this. So here you can see that China basically, although badly hit or, or the damage in, is taking place highest in China, but they are also investing on uh, highest amount in, in terms of clean energy. So only in 2019, China invested more than uh, almost uh, 80 billion US dollar uh, on the clean energy. And uh, I mean, they are shifting uh, their, their, their energy needs towards cleaner sources of energy. So they are expecting that by 2050, they're expecting that they will shift all of their needs uh, toward the cleaner sources of energy. So now here, if we look the total economic burden of air pollution, uh, in China, which in, it is 6.6, .6, which is highest, and then followed by India 5.4%, and Russia 4.1% of their GDP. So, and Germany 3.5%, and United States 3%. So if we, I mean, estimate in terms of value, uh, because the GDP of these countries is in trillions, so in 6.6% would be, would be quite high. If we add up all these figures in terms of value, so it will generate um, billions of dollars um, per annum, and that is damages that are taking place and um, due to air, air pollution. So this we have already discussed. I think this is all from my side. I'm going to stop here. Now we need everyone's help to stop pollution. It's your word, help keep it clean. Thank you very much. Now, if you have any question, then let us discuss it.
Thank you very much, Dr. Badullah, uh, uh, for so sharing with the interesting lecture. So now the session is open for question and answer session. So it's Dr. Asif is around, then I would like, to, yes, Dr. Asif, please go ahead. Yes, so thank you very much, uh, Dr. Fahim, for giving me the opportunity. I would just like to have a quick uh, comment uh, about uh, the um, payments uh, in terms of what consumers pay. So if we can actually shift the burden from uh, the consumers paying uh, uh, onto the subsidies which the governments can provide, that would bring a huge difference, uh, particularly in terms of the uh, renewable energy sector, uh, because we know when we talk about electricity production from coal or from other sources, uh, fossil fuel sources, that actually causes a lot of pollution um, in addition to the greenhouse gases that it releases. So when we talk about green and clean uh, sources of energy, then that needs to be substantially subsidized by governments. And only then the consumers will have to pay less so that's one way of moving forward in Pakistan, particularly when we look into the uh, solar energy problem. And also in this regard, um, there is a, a green climate fund, which is actually available um, according to the 2015 Paris Agreement, uh, in which the developed countries, they can provide funding to developing countries. And if these funds are channeled through subsidies, I think it can bring a huge transformation in our society. So I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic that in the future, on the grid, we will have renewable sources of energy being provided to households. So that's one way in which the burden uh, of, uh, of uh, payment on, on, on the side of consumers can be reduced substantially. The other point that I would like to make in terms of the health impacts and the associated air pollution is that if we redu reduce air pollution, that is going to have a substantial positive impact on the health of individuals and therefore they will not need to go to the hospitals because at the moment what we are observing is a huge uh, burden health burden cost burden on the hospitals because if you go to the pulmonology departments they are overwhelmed with the um, patients who suffer from either indoor pollution or outdoor pollution so i believe if we substantially take measures to reduce air pollution that is going to also have a very positive impact on the economics of health as well. Thank you very much. That was a comment. It's really a good comment and I really highly appreciate and I'm, most of the part I agree with that, that, that these are the good options. But you know, in underdeveloped countries, because government has not have sufficient, I mean, economic capacity to pay the subsidy. And although, I mean, in Pakistan, as you know, we are trying to, I mean, promote solar solar energy by giving, I mean, a sort of subsidy by having no taxes on import of solars. And that is, I mean, I agree that that kind of measure definitely will help. So on the other side, I mean, from the International Green Fund, basically, uh, in underdeveloped country has another problem because they need very and concrete type of empirical evidence that how you are improving your uh, clean environment. They need very documented type of information, which under developing country has not capacity in order to maintain that, I mean, documented or, or, or keeping proper record. For example, in Billion Tree Tsunami, when we try to dig it out that in, in KPK, what kind of species has been planted uh, so that we can see and that and we were trying to estimate the impact of on air quality that how it is improving because as long as we don't have the species of trees and number of trees so we really approached to the ministry and I mean, we did not able to find those i mean numbers of trees under each species so that kind of lack lack of capability of, 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 of ability to manage those type of data sets so that we can claim and the, the, I mean, fund from the green green fund that look, we have planted this much tree and now we are entitled to have this much uh, fund from you because we have, I mean, controlled this level, this much pollution. So capacity building is another issue, in fact, in, in development countries that need to really improve. So other things, I highly appreciate what you contributed and I agree with that. Thank you, Dr. Saab. Uh, we'll take one more question uh, that let's take from Ms. Kainat Javed. 
uh, in the interest of the time. Uh, Ms. Kaina, ja Kaina Javed, please ask your question. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'll be short. Like, I want to ask about what is the role of circular econ economy and the terms like green business strategy they are going to play in future, specifically in the context of developing countries. Because we see that uh, now the people are getting... Uh, knowledge about these things that how circular economy works so what about the small businesses in developing countries are they going to impact us economically as well as environmentally or not thank you oh, all this depends that government how government taking measures to for example if they want to really promote i mean small businesses i mean they they should promote environment friendly technology so as long as government is taking care of that, definitely it will not only help to promote the economic condition of the people, but also help to improve the climatic condition. So it depends that how government deal it. For example, I'm giving you the example in agriculture sector in, in I mean, when government started to promote solar tube wells in, in Balochistan. So what happened? The, I mean, um, government gives subsidy on solar tube wells. Uh, people, I mean, blindly uh, started to install it. And now finally the water table has gone down uh, much at a much higher level. And now people are worried that what will happen to the next generations? So because they are consuming the water of the future generation. So if at the same time, government would have think that we will give this solar energy uh, with the other water, uh, I mean, and controlling uh, strategies like in Punjab. And they said, we will give the solar uh, for two well only if you will also install and the technology and that also give the, on, on the, there is an automatic system that uh, give the uh, water to the plant only when it, it is barely needed. When it, there is fear that the productivity will affect, there is automatic, I mean, installed. So they, they, now they are promoting their technology that uh, the solar will be provided along with that technology, not the alone. So if that kind of, I mean, that, I mean, government take measure, then definitely we can make it environment friendly as well. And not only looking for economic benefit, but also environmental benefits. Thank you, sir. Uh, we, we have one uh, comment from Mr. Iftikhar. With that, we'll close the session. Uh, G. Uh, Iftihar Saab, you would like to add something? Yeah, actually, uh, what I wanted to say is that uh, we should actually move towards equity rather than equality because uh, not everybody is uh, equally able to pay. Also, we know that not everybody is equally willing to pay. But for example, uh, I have read somewhere that uh, in Sweden, what they do is uh, when they uh, give ticket, a uh, uh, parking ticket or any ticket to a customer, it's based on his income. For example, uh, a person who has parked wrongfully in the same spot can be fined one corona or two coronas, but another one can be fined 500 coronas based on his ability to pay. So we should uh, put in effect some mechanism which, put, uh, which should actually take into account the equity. That would uh, not only reduce the burden on the government, and uh, we are also challenged by the certain factors which uh, challenge us uh, or limit our ability to get foreign aids, like uh, Dr. Obedolanjan has uh, mentioned. So I think we should rely on our own selves. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Tehasa, for uh, contributing. Um, in the interest of the time, I have scheduled that we have three bajis to close today. So we have this small activity so uh, that group photo bhi aaj ke din mein koi group photo bhi nahi hui so i just want uh, with your all permission uh, agar ab main aap logo se keh dun uh, abhi tak main aap logo se jo kehta aa raha tha to abhi main opposite karta hu theek hai i would request ki aap sare uh, jo hai apna camera band kar le theek hai aur uh, screen pe yeah that's right <laughs> and when i when i ask you to switch on your camera so you will do that to me as well theek hai um, so switch off your camera for a moment और स्क्रीन पे मैं आप लोगों के साथ कुछ शेयर करता हूँ और फिर मैं आप लोगों से सवाल पूछता हूँ और अकॉर्डिंग टू द इंस्ट्रक्शंस फिर आप लोगों ने जो आपकी आपने जो कैमरा है वो ऑन करना है ठीक है जी लेट अलाउ मी टू शेयर माय स्क्रीन एम आई ऑडिबल टू एवरीवन आप लोगों को मेरी आवाज़ आ रही है प्लीज़ गिव मी अ थम्स अपट्स लेट्स गव इट 
come into some uh, energy moment <laughs> all right only three thumbs up i can see give me more come on seven eight great g so uh, i'm going to show you my screen and um, I, I, you might have played this before or you might have not if you have still fine how many people can see this on the screen all done all right so you have to count the letter f all right you have to count the letter f in this sentence and uh, write in the chat box when you're done please write in the chat box when you're done no 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 don't write the number don't write the number don't write the number just write done phone right uh, dr asif switch off your camera for now please all right good just write done done all right all right all right you're all done i'm going to stop the screen now all right so uh, let me ask you uh, all those who think there are three or few uh, uh word letter f please switch on your camera all right switch on your camera and keep keep it like this all right all right now this is amazing so so the, these are all people who who uh, only count three or few f right um, is that right come on give me the expression the good expression yes like this one or like something yeah okay now so we have how many people the coordinator can count uh, how many people are there all right ms shahnila would also help us in this how many people who have um, okay so now move forward the, the, there how many people have um, count uh, four or less four or less please switch on your camera two more okay okay four or less okay so let me move forward switch on your camera uh, how many people have seen uh, how have, have count five or less switch on your camera five okay 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 right right anybody else anybody else five or less five or less please switch on your camera all right so let's move forward out miss kaina all right right and uh, how many people have seen six or less how many people have seen six Dr. Fahim, six. Wow, wow. Uh, Safura Bajahat. So we have two people with uh, the count of six. You know how interesting is this? The same sentence. We were looking at the same sentence. We are at the same screen, and uh, how many differences we have? Like we started with three, then four, then five, and six. There are two people with six. There are um, I don't know how many people. If the coordinator can help me with eight people with three or less. Um, uh, I don't know how many people were with. All right. So, what is the difference, and uh, how many F are there actually? Do you want to know the answer? Okay, give me a thumbs up in the, uh, uh, in the on the screen so that that I can know. You want to know like you know this kind of a thumbs up. See it on my screen. Yeah, like this. Yeah. So I want to see. So let's uh, let's let's clap for the people who, who count uh, six. There are six F. So Dr. Fahim and Ms. Safura, you are the winner of this activity. <laughs> all right. So we we all uh, we we all make this um, um, thumbs up for Dr. Fahim and Ms. Safura. They they have won today's quiz. I have the same quiz for tomorrow's session as well. So let's have this and Ms. Shani. Let me I take just one announcement uh, for tomorrow actually. Get too long before starting. Please. So, uh, uh, yeah. I just please. wanted to have this group photo and then. Um, ah okay. So we can have first photo, group photo and then we can. Easy, sure, sure. Yeah. So Ms. Shanila is taking our is capturing our movements. If 
I would request all of you to switch on your camera if it is possible for you, so we can capture this moment together. Um, and the pose that we are going to make today is very simple. You all make it, but please make it like this, not like this, not like this. All right. It should be straight. All right. And with both of your hands and it, both of your hands should be visible enough. All right. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. I like I that. Still see one video participant. So I'm hoping they don't want to be part of the like, group photo. Uh, we can assume, but we can request them if you can switch off yeah. your camera for 30 seconds or so. So we can uh, at least we at uh, the the group photo has take, uh, been taken, okay. and this so is on the, the count of three. On the count of three. One. Okay. So make your um, uh, thumbs up like this, quick or oh, awesome. One, One two, two, and three. Three. Perfect. Let me take another one. Sure. For my. Can we try it again or show what? Like yep. Just, uh, uh, please do it just once more. Okay. Uh, let, let's, all, let's all yeah. come together. Let's all come together. Let's all come together. Unmi uh, unmute your mic. Unmute your yep. mic. And let's all come together. Unmute your mic. Yep. For 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it together. That would be more fun. So, On the count of three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And three. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you, Dr. Fahim. Any instructions for tomorrow, please? Uh, but mystery is still there. How, like, how six F were there? You want to know the answer? Let me yeah. show it again. Let, let, me, let me show it again, and uh, you, you want to uh, count it with, with uh, knowing the answer in advance, right? So, uh, Dr. Fahim, just allow us bear us for one minute. Nice, nice. Hey, Dr. Fahim, you have counted six number, right? Can yes. you help us? Where were the six finished files of of in scientific and then off? Yes. Has the mystery solved or is still the mystery? <laughs> yes, uh, still four. Still four. Still four. Still four. Four. No, it's finished, finished files, files, yes. Of, of these are of five scientific, scientific. And of. Oh, another of. Okay. Tell me, Doctor to you? What to you? <laughs> okay, guys. First of all, I appreciate being and apologies for being behind the schedule for an hour time, but I hope it was interesting and it was worthful. Uh, for all of you. So tomorrow there is a request that the early morning session is based for on the group discussion. And uh, I would re request your active participation in group discussion that you have to list down your reach 